I became obsessed with perfecting how to drive and then I wanted to get better at it and then it kind of turned into an art form for me. I just got obsessed with cars and modifying and going faster and it gave me the sense of freedom that I was looking for. Hey, my name is Amelia Hartford and I'm taking over Whistles YouTube and if you know me, you know where we're at, at the track. Join along today as I take over Whistle. Drifting's a community. As you guys can see, there's a lot of people out here today. We just come out, hang out, crash our cars into friends' cars, and have a good time doing it. I genuinely couldn't imagine anywhere else that I'd rather be on a day off. This right here is my 1995 Nissan 240SX LSX swapped T56 transmission, dual caliper rear, and then a welded rear end. And it has the hydro, so extra drifty drift on the hydro. This is my second car. My first car was an Infiniti G35. Unfortunately, on the way home from the racetrack, someone hit me from the rear, totaled the entire car. I wanted to keep it in the Japanese family, going from an Infiniti to a Nissan. Being in the Midwest, living in Indiana at the time, I had to go with American V8. I ended up going with a Chevy small block platform, and that's how she was birthed. This is probably the longest I've ever owned a car. I've had this car for, oh, I won't tell you guys how old I am, but almost 15 years now. <laughs> My dad wasn't into cars growing up, but I have a very fond memory of when he was still alive, of us driving down the 101 in his drop-top Mercedes, blasting Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody, and just having a great time. My first car was my Infiniti G35. I picked that up, never having driven stick a day in my life, figured it out on the way home. I got that car because my dad had just passed, and. I, I needed that sense of freedom. I didn't have that male figure, that person in my life to tell me what car I needed to buy. So I resulted to looking up on the internet and the internet was biased towards race cars saying, you need rear-wheel drive, you need a stick shift. So completely roasted the clutch on the way home. I became obsessed with perfecting how to drive and then I wanted to get better at it. It gave me the sense of freedom that I was looking for. And then from there, I found the car community and the car community became my found family. We just got obsessed with cars and modifying and going faster and ended up down this rabbit hole. <laughs> Every Sunday, my dad and I, and sometimes my mom and my brother, would go to the movie theaters. And that was just our quality time. We were obsessed with just movies, just talking about it. What would you rate that one through 10? And what did you like about that? And what would you change about this? And one of the last movies I actually saw with my dad was Ratatouille. <laughs> now that I think about it, that whole story says a lot about going after what you love in life. I drove this turd from Indiana to California with whatever I could fit in it. I was driving this to auditions with no AC, sweat dripping down my back, my makeup was melted, my hair was frizzy. When I wasn't pursuing acting and I wasn't working in a restaurant, I was working on my car, on a budget, on food stamps, and sometimes unemployment. It's a very difficult thing to do. I couldn't turn on the television without feeling guilty and mad at myself that I wasn't pursuing a dream that I've had my entire life. So ever since then, I've been back and forth from Indiana and LA pursuing this crazy dream. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the vlog and thank you for tuning in. Today we do the quarter mile attempt in the C8 Corvette. I've been working as a waitress for six years and my mom was like, honey, why don't you start a YouTube? I'm like, what do you know, mom? <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> Come on. More and more, I had friends telling me that that was something that I should do because I was always working on cars and I was posting it on Instagram. Vice Media, the network in New York, they invited me out there after seeing what I was doing on Instagram. And when I went out there, I met all these other YouTubers. They're like, yeah, you should totally do it. And I went home and I just filmed a walk around on my car. The first video ended up doing half a million views. So for the past five years now on YouTube, I've been doing three videos a week and haven't stopped. I'd seen other servers lose roles and opportunities to people who had a following on social media. So part of YouTubing was to build an audience that could translate into action films, AKA car films would be the dream, of course. It's definitely created this outlet for me to be able to do the things that I want to do and eventually produce my own car films. I own now 
It's like picking a favorite child. You can't do that. My dream car is an F40, a Ferrari F40. It's only like a $2.6 million car. My next car, it's no surprise. It's gonna be the new 2023 Corvette Z06. The steering was super shaky when I was driving it, and then that corner just locked and then threw me off course. As I was driving, it was kind of like wobbly, so I figured I'd take a couple laps because it's a whole new setup on the car and get used to it. Coming around here, my steering bound and got stuck. You can actually see the front tire marks off the course here. You can see right here, this line here, both of them where the tires just got locked and threw me straight off the course, but that's drifting. One of my favorite videos, I bought my mom a brand new RAV4. It was her dream car and she couldn't afford a car. After my dad passed, she wasn't left with anything. It meant a lot to me to be able to surprise her with that. Mental health is hugely important to me after losing my dad to suicide. And everyone had been telling me, do merch, do merch. We want to buy, we want to support. And I didn't feel right by not spreading a message. And with the apparel, it's called return to life. The whole phrase is wake from death and return to life. It's something that I like to do to help spread awareness and destigmatize even talking about mental health. A percentage of, of all proceeds that we make go to uh, various um, mental health nonprofit organizations. I think my mind is always running. There's just so many cars that I want to modify in my lifetime that I don't think I've hit that creative block quite yet. And I'm really thankful that I also have a fan base who enjoys the stupid wild stuff that I do to cars and they're along for the ride. <laughs>